wonderful good evening at our church, the Ecclesia Göttingen. I'm so glad you're here in the first Wednesday service and everyone at the live stream, wonderful you're here too and you participate in this service. My name is Mark, I'm pastor of this church and I'm glad to be here, uh, relaxed from back from holiday and share with you what God laid on my heart. Uh, the title of this sermon is a question where I want to try to give an answer for. The question is, who do you trust? I have a question. Do you know these uh, figures called roly-poly dolls? You know them. I brought a picture with me. It's something like this. Maybe you have had such a tumbler as a child and played with it. What's the special thing about them? If you touch them, they sway. And, but in the end, they stand up again. They don't lay down. They always stand upright. They can do this because the center of gravity is just constructed for in this way. These figures have the capacity, independent how vigorously they are touched, to stand up again. Maybe you've tried already, just touch a little bit, then a little more, and then you are boxing and it's bum, bum, bum. But in the end, it's standing upright again. These um, psychologists often use this uh, roly-poly as a metaphor for the attribute resilience. Resilience is de derived from the Latin word resiliere. This means um, jump back. This is the thing this figure does. You just touch it and it will turn back in its um, original form. It means to be a resist, have resistance or capacity inner strength, if crisis will encounter you, or you will have problems and failures, and it means to let yourself not be thrown off the course, and it means to stand up again. Maybe you realized in your life if that some people cope with problems and difficulties better than others. They all react in a different way. And I think it, it has to deal with your inner uh, roly-poly doll. It uh, means I'm ready not to be encouraged, but to stand up despite of problems. Miscellaneous guidebooks and a report about it. Um, tips like uh, be your own psychologist and cope with problems. I've heard a sentence um, like, uh, fall down, stand up, uh, prepare your crown and go on. Just, yeah, come to the course again and go on. You and I, we all know challenges, problems, sorrows, distress, fears, it's really exciting that nothing of this is, um, is it's not said that it is valid for, um, for our, us as Christians. We will live in wonderful times. This is not reported in the Bible, never, nowhere. Believers are not spared from problems. And many people, the Bible reports about, uh, you can see this. And I would like to take you into a story we can learn about in the Bible. And this story is about a man who was in a problematic situation. And we would like to look at 
his dealing with it. And his name is Hezekiah. Um, I've brought a picture of a stylish uh, guy. Um, he could have been a king, and this was exactly what Hezekiah was. He was a king. It means the strength of Yahweh. He was born 750 years before Christ, and with 25 years as a young king, he was king of the south um, regiment of Judah. Israel was um, separated in two kingdoms, and he was in the south kingdom. And he ruled for 29 years and has done what God pleased. And in 2 Kings 18, we read about him and his Kia trusted in the Lord. This assertion will be very important in the later story. He followed the, the Lord in everything, and Hiskia was a wonderful God, and he believed in God, and he brought his line, his life into line of the Lord and his rules. And the Bible has such a positive testimony about him. You see very devastating um, trials about uh, kings who haven't done what God wanted, but Hiskia did. did. He pleased God. In the way he lived and he ruled, he pleased God. But despite, he had very great problems, and I would like to talk about one of them. As a young king in the fourth year of his regiment, he was a witness um, of the situation when Salmanasar, the king of Assyria, of the neighborhood kingdom, um, struggled against Israel. And this struggle, awful struggle, and a fight was on the border of Hiskia, Hezekiah. And he knew if the north kingdom would fall, then his was the next that would have been attacked. And that's what happened. In the 14th renal year, the next king of the Assyrians came, Sanherib, and he just conquered one city after another until he stood before Jerusalem and he wanted to, um, to conquer uh, this capital as well. But Hezekiah, Hezekiah, sorry, was responsible uh, to find a resolution for this situation and find answers, and he had an idea. He made a deal with the Syrian king, um, and he wanted to offer him all gold and silver and precious treasures. Yeah, and offer to, in order to be left alone by Sanherib. And so they all um, have taken all gold they could find on doors and doorposts and um, brought it get together to the king, Sanherib. And what did he do? He accepted all these treasures, but he did not let off the besieging um, Jerusalem. He wanted to see it burn and destroy it completely. And after everything worthy was out of the country, this was much easier for Sanherib because his Zekiah was very destitute now. He did not have any money to buy and engage other troops who could help. 
was really devastating and desperate situation. The ambassadors of the Syrian king came to the city wall of Jerusalem and they talked to the ambassadors of Hezekiah. And these ambassadors were scorned at, they were laughed at, and they um, were, yeah, they made clear they could only surrender. This would be the only chance to survive. They wanted Hezekiah uh, to capitulate completely. This was their claim in 2 Kings 18. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them, for they were not gods, but... Oh, sorry, this is an other verse. Um, this question, what... Um, Hiskia trusted in, we already talked about it, he trusted in God, this was clear, and he followed him, and here he was asked this question, to whom do you trust in? It all looks very devastating, to who do you trust, but you do not want to give up? And I would like to ask you, what would you do in such a desperate situation if you were king or queen? If you had the responsibility, it's a really great burden, I think. It's, it, um, it's very um, an important decision. And what would you do? You are alone and you're destitute and that your neighbors were already defeated and now it's your turn. Do you uh, just surrender or do you, would you uh, fight until the end, take everyone you have to fight and just storm against them and will fight and fight? Or would you wait? You should not wait too long because no one can go in or out and you won't have anything to eat any longer. I don't know what I would do, but the Bible tells us what Hezekiah did. Um, second uh, Kings 19 Verse 1 to 4 says, When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebner, and the secretary and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth to the prophet. Isaiah of Amos. They told him, this is what Hezekiah says. This day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace, as when children came to the moment of birth, and there is no strength to deliver them. Maybe the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander, whom his master, king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God, that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. They therefore pray for the remnant that still survives. Hezekiah, just first thing he has done, he wore scratchy uh, garment. This should be in a expression of humiliation and it shows um, the hopelessness and he knew he had to cry for help to God. He humiliates himself. Um, I've read about Jonah 
the prophet um, today and uh, you may remember from your kids church ch kids church um, Jonah did not want to go into the town Nineveh to preach to the people but when he has done it um, all people repented and this is what Hezekiah has done here they uh, sat there in sackcloth and did not eat anything. And this was a cry for help and a humiliation and God accepted it and he has forgiven all the people because they they believe in his word. And this is what Hezekiah did here with all his ministers. He, um, he has um, let uh, go to Josiah. He did not go into his palace or his in his bed. He went into the temple and the house of God, where the presence of God was in that these days. In the temple, God promised his presence. And Hezekiah knew and his heart was prepared. He only wanted to go into the presence of God and he prayed for support in his prayer. You could summarize that yes, this, um, Ezekiel was within the town and so the people got go, uh, Isaiah was in town and the people could go to him. Hezekiah knew he needed the support in his prayer and he wanted to take people with him and they, they were sent to Isaiah to support him with prayer. And he believed in God, in the word of God. A few verses Later, we read about the ambassador, the people who came to Isaiah. Isaiah has had a word for um, Hezekiah, and it meant God will intervene and help. And this was a word which the um, ambassadors became from. Isaiah for Hezekiah. Hezekiah uh, just acted exemplary here. Despite Hezekiah um, made this decision to follow God, um, and to believe in his word, he had another attack by the Assyrian king. Um, but in meanwhile, something happened. The Assyrian um, king sent his troops uh, to Hezekiah, but on the other side, he was attacked by the Ethiopian king, and he decided to backtrack. Um, they just uh, made a break and just uh, withdrew all his uh, troops. To, uh, but before he has done this, he gave Hezekiah a letter which should um, yeah, give him fear. This message is uh, for the king of Hiskiah. It is um, 2 Kings 19, 10 to 13. Do not let the God you depend on devise you when you when he says, Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Surely you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely. 
and will you be li- delivered? Did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Haran, Rezeb, and the people of Eden who were in Tel Asar? Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad? Where are the kings of Leah, Seraphim, Gena, and Ivar? Hezekiah's view should, um, should look at all the re- um, kingdoms around him who were conquered by the Assyrians. And in this situation, when he was looking um, at all these failures around him, he should have been this, um, attacked. His, his trust, his faith should be attacked. He should believe in the reality more than into the faith for God. On the one hand, he sees this desperate situation and he knows he he will be in the next um, kingdom which will be attacked. But on the other hand, he saw what God gave him, what kind of promise God gave him. When I was thinking about this, I had, I was, I thought about a strategy of the devil. He as well sends us letters from devil to me, to Mark. I've received this letter. We all receive these letters. We don't receive them in form in paper form. It's only an image, not per email or electronical spam or whatever. It's mail that lands in our mind and our thoughts. Oh. Um, we receive posts, post, and this is a great problem. This is what is told us to us in this letter. With these problems, the devil shows us our failures in the past or the failures of other people. This We should um, view all these bad situations. Look at your parents, the, the awful marriage they had. Maybe your friends all are di- becoming divorced. Why should it be different with you? Why should you be glad and happy? Why should you hold on to um, to fidelity. Think about others. Have they not um, forsaken the church? Why should it be different with you? Think about the Monday. Haven't you lied at work? Just look at your problem. Think about problem. And our view should be just led to a different focus than all the answers to prayers or salvation in our life. So we receive such letters as Hezekiah has received and uh, we read about um, an image in the Bible where the devil goes around like a roaring lion. In reality, I do not want to encounter a roaring lion because I think he will re- eat me. <laughs> you cannot defeat him by your strength. And the Bible uses exactly this image 
about the devil who is looking for victims he can eat. And they should um, hint at our problems, our bad past for which Jesus has died already. He remembers us to all the past which was not good. These are the letters of the devils. How did Hezekiah react when he received this letter? Second Kings 19. After he received this letter, he went up to the house of the Lord and he just laid this letter down in front of the Lord and he started to pray to the Lord. He did not take a cupboard or a file where he puts this letter and um, he knew where to go with this problem. He went to the Lord. He knew what the enemy told him and he had two choices and he chose to go to the Lord and show him the letter despite he already knows what's the intent of the content of this letter he just laid this letter in front of God and told him what was what has happened just he gave him his problem in his prayer with an honest heart a very candid prayer wonderful in this prayer he prayed he just was really honest and he told God we cannot win we have no chance and he is afraid and I have this problem but I give it to you God and I pray to you to intervene Hezekiah gave his problem to God he first tried to cope with it by him, his own strength and he thought to give him everything he possessed um, but this did not work and he did not have another chance than to come into the presence of God not his wisdom, his strategy or anything helped him then um, to, to put this letter in front of God and I ask you what do you do with these letters of your lives, with all the challenges? What is when you have fears, not problems, but fears and existence, um, about your existence? I do not want how, know how to pay tomorrow anymore. I don't know what kind of profession I will have tomorrow. I don't know my call for my life. I don't know. And I tried so many things by my own strength. What do you do with this letter evening for evening and crying about it? Or do you put it in a cupboard and, or in a file and always taking it out again? Uh, but remember, Hezekiah has done a really wise thing. He went to the Lord with it with his honest heart and gave it to God. What do you do with the letters of your life? Do you lie it in front of him and wait for an answer and trust in him that he will find an exit? Where do we go with our letters of life? In the beginning, I've um, talked about the resilience, this resistance, in inner strength to deal with problems. That's yeah, true. Some have more difficulties with it than others. 
And, but no one of us is such a superhero to, to deal with problems all the times in a wonderful manner. All people can have situations where they don't know any further. At the end, uh, before burnout or whatever and how strong you think you are, everyone can be thrown out of the course. Who helps us then? What is our salvation? And I wish we learned about Hezekiah today to put our letters in front of God. This is the greatest resilience we can have. Not to say we have the strength in us, our ideas, our strategies. Just ask me or others. No, we should react like Hezekiah. God, we come to you. My capacity to stand up again, it only can be found in, with God, where I can find counsel, wisdom, come to God. Often I say, tell this sentence, because it's so true, God should not be our last as a matchstick. The uh, place you first go, you will trust in this place the most. And we express with our prayer, God is the first place we want to go. Before we go to anyone else, we come to the Lord. It's not wrong to go someone else and to pray together, but the first thing should be to go to God. And if someone has a word for you, then let it be told to you because you need the words from God and you need the heart of Hezekiah to go into the presence of God. Hezekiah had to learn this painful, that he should have done this from the beginning. We express who we trust, really, if we go to God. God has promised his help, and he has done this. And it was told that 185,000 men were killed within one night and King Sanherib was killed by his own sons, sons, and Jerusalem was not conquered. God has helped his people in this situation. The Assyrians could not um, conquer this country afterwards. And as well, God knows your sorrows, your distress, and your challenges. You're an open book in front of him. Where do you go with your letters? There are so different um, options to react with this letter. And often people carry this letter in front of him and with just showing around their great problem, they are not interesting in resolving this problem. They need this situation for attention and always holding up the 
problem. I have a problem. I don't know, not want it to um, cease, but I want you to watch me. This is very unhealthy. He does not want only want you to resolve the problem. He want to heal your heart and give you worthy an identity, which you can is not found in the fundament of the world. The living God promises you this. You don't have to carry this problem with you around anymore. You're accepted and you are told you're loved and wonderful for created and God is your creator and he wants to be with you wherever you are. To be resilient means I can, but the highest form of resilience is found out of, outside of me by God and I invite you to lay your letter down in front of God and express in who you trust because he reads your letter and you can trust in him. Just think a moment about this where you go with your letters. I would like to give you one moment to think about it and afterwards I would like to pray. Lord Father, I thank you that we have access to you through the blood of Christ. We are allowed to come and we confess we often do not use this way by Jesus. And if we have problems and challenges, we try to cope with it by our own strength. And so often we experience how we failed. Many problems increase even. And we've heard about Hezekiah who trusted in you and was a very good king and followed you. And Lord, I pray that we take him as an example for us and our life once we'll turn and uh, change into life like he had that we know we need you and we humiliate ourselves and just lay down our tools and say we need you and we want to dive into your presence and we would like to be people who just pray together with others and are open for your your calling, for your talking to us through sermons or whatever. We want to trust in it more than in the reality around us. Just create such a heart in us. Make us to people who understand our resistance to stand up and have new perspective we cannot receive this by ourselves no matter how strong we are it's only found in you god in trust in you to, when we come with our letters to you and lay them down in front of you and we want to express you are in the first place you have the first priority in our life because we are thankful for everything you give us in our life and we pray that you lead us into 
other thinking that you just speak to our hearts. And if there are some people who hear my words, give encourage them and give them new power to act in the right way and come to you. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen.